So we call the meeting to order at now 506 still. Wow, that was very well done, Ray. Um, we will begin with public audience. Um, just for the record, all our people are in attendance with the exception of Sherry at the moment. We have several guests. We have Roger and Susan. And Mike, you're still a task force guy. Comments from the public audience participants. Um, well, if, if you'd like to hear what we've been doing as far as endorsements in the last month, um, I have just sure. a, a couple of minutes. Would this be a good time? It's public audience, man. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the day after the last meeting, October 20th, um, four of us presented the end roads to um, a rotary uh, called Triberry Rotary in um, Woodbury, Southbury, and Middlebury, um, went over well, um, did not get written endorsements, but it went half an hour over their regular meeting, so there was an interest. And um, then um, November 9th, which was like last Monday, we presented, six of us presented to um, the Simsbury United Methodist Church, a special, um, it was a special meeting just, just for us. <laughs> um, with the pastor and the social justice committee, you know, members, leadership. Um, and we, we talked for the full hour. We, we, we talked about the Simsbury climate emergency declaration. We did not talk about En-ROADS or carbon dividend. Um, they are presenting to their committee tomorrow and then their committee, the, the whole social justice committee would, will make a recommendation to the church council. And so any endorsement, ho hopefully the endorsement will be from the church as a whole. Um, I thought, you know, it seemed promising. Um, I, you know, um, anyway, uh, so that's happening. One of the outcomes of this um, a member asked um, whether a similar initiative was happening in Bloomfield. Um, I contacted um, Marianne Horn, who is, um, I know from PACE and was, is on the Clean Energy Task Force in Bloomfield and they have it on their agenda for next month. So, you know, um, this is happening also in Bloomfield. Um, and um, so we are, we are heading into our lobby time um, uh, December 9th, we will be meeting with the staff of uh, Johanna Hayes, hopefully with multiple students, young people um, to present. Um, I have also, um, we will be talking also with the senators, with you know Senator Murphy and Blumenthal. Um, on the local level, um, I have a call in to uh, Representative John Hampton um, and their hope, their, their expecting to schedule something between now and the start of the legislative session, which is in the beginning of January. Um, I do have like one question for Mr. Walzik. I wonder if he knows uh, Mr. Douglas Nielsen, who is at the high school. Yep. Do you know him? Yes, I do. Oh, cool. Okay. So maybe we can talk afterwards. I'm, I'm thinking of, how to approach um, introducing this to Kevin Whitkos um, as a Republican. Um, and so anyway, I had I have an idea, but I'd, I'd like to be able to talk with you about it. Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, so that's it for now. Cool, well, thank you, Susan. I have two questions for you. Who are you meeting with at Johanna Hayes' office? Um, we're, we're meeting with a staff member um, I, I'm not quite sure. I can tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll email you the name. Yeah, that'd be great. I just, there, I just have some other outreach ongoing with them around Envision and, you know, some of the stuff that I'm working on and, and huh. they've actually been fairly receptive. And, the, and okay. then the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, um, see if I say this properly, Kevin Whitkos is, I, I've, talked with him in the past yeah. about sustainability issues. Right. He's been very receptive to those issues. Mm -hmm. um, 
we have never really been been able, whether it's from scheduling or, or time, you know, or frankly interest, I don't know what the deal is. We've never been able to follow up to any kind of conclusions. But I will say that when I've spoken with him in public sessions, like at a school board meeting or, at, you know, there was another, I can't remember what, some kind of task force that I got invited to talk with here in Simsbury, and he was in attendance, and he was very receptive. You know, I thought okay. they were, these were great ideas, et cetera, and I just have not, um, there hadn't been follow up. So I'm just, I think he will be receptive. I don't think you have to really worry about how you approach him other than I would take, the, like you've heard me say it before, take a business approach, you know. It's, okay. the, it's a value, it's a value added approach. Thank you. That's that's encouraging because I, I, I'm not quite sure. I haven't actually interacted with him directly. Yeah, um, he seems like a pretty decent guy. Okay. All right. Anything else, public audience wise, Roger? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks you guys for doing this. Uh, it's great. You're uh, you're on my list as climate heroes, uh, <laughs> and and that's a big deal. Uh, and Bob, the Johanna Hayes person we talked to was uh, Gianna Judkins. Oh. She okay. is the uh, executive assistant uh, at G-I-A-N-N-A -N -N -A dot J-U-D-K-I-N-S at mail dot house dot com. I can put that in the uh, chat yeah. if you'd like. Yeah. Thank you. Because uh, I got the first 10 letters that I told you I don't multitask well. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know who we're going to be talking to this time, Susan, but that's okay. cool. Um, and I, I don't know. Did you guys get my comments, Susan? Did you send those on or? I, I haven't um, because I, it's a new document. I thought the task force would want to see it. And then we could perhaps at the end, you know, add our comments. I. Okay. Well, I, I just might add that uh, Susan's been great and, you know, she, we, and thanks for sharing the document with us. And, uh, I, I had a couple things in there to just um, fortify some of the sentences a little bit, which if you'd like to see them, Susan can send those on to you. Uh, and then um, there were two things at the end. Uh, I think there was eight items in your list and I added two more. One is from the town of Stonington, which is going for a vote on Thursday on the same thing and their task force. And they're uh, very excited about getting that passed in Stonington. So we have high school students in on that one as well. And uh, it was just uh, adding a line that created a student advisory committee that you guys could uh, talk with and keep the students in the loop so that the, the students that are learning from you on how to uh, enact public policy, how to hold meetings. Um, you know, I introduced the students to Robert's Rules of Order and they, wow, there's actually rules? And, uh, you know, so, you know, one of the things about having the students in it's to obviously achieve climate action, but another big part of it is they're learning from all of these task force around the state on how to conduct business. And uh, these, these kids are, you know, 15 and 16, and uh, we have a new student in the Hartford group, in the Hartford chapter, that, and we're uh, starting to talk to the city council there, and that's looking very promising also. And that kid started when he was in sixth grade and worked on the plastic bag ban in Connecticut and uh, was on the core team when he was in sixth grade. And so he's, he joined our team in Hartford and he's totally fired up and he says, Oh, I know how to talk to politicians, uh, you know, and, and committees and stuff. And I said, okay, good. You know? So, but, um, the reason for adding just a line where you would create some kind of a, a real link to the students, I think is important. So if you would consider that. And a final thought was, uh, if you create a benchmarking calendar, in this in either in the in the in the working group that comes out of the resolution or as part of the resolution where you can benchmark successes and deadlines uh, to keep things on schedule uh, for emissions reductions on things people have to do 
Having a calendar is really, really important, I have found, because it says people then know that, you know, we have, we have some deadlines here. We have some goals. So those are two key things. Thank you, Roger. <clears throat> I do, I have to say, just personally, I love the idea of the student engagement. I mean, everything we're doing, it'll have minimal impact in our lifetime, but mm. exceptional impact in their lifetime, either good or bad, depending on how well we do. So, yep. you know, I like that. Well, we, we have an item on the agenda to discuss March draft coming up later uh, in the meeting. Yeah, can I just ask um, either or both of you a question? Um, in your experience with other towns and cities doing this, you know, briefly, what, what has been the process of engaging the community? I mean, I have a little bit of a concern that we could write something, you know, the six of us could write something um, and spring it on the board um, and, you know, without really any sense of where the town is or um, so in terms of engaging other stakeholders, how, what have you seen in terms of a process? Uh, Sue, would you like me to take that or? No, Roger, you should. Okay. So, uh, first of all, that's a really critically important question. And we take that very seriously. So, one of the things we do is we do uh, ask around town. We look for endorsements from uh, groups, environmental groups, not for profit groups, businesses, schools. For instance, Trinity College is going to endorse the Hartford. Uh, climate emergency resolution. We already have um, about a half a dozen uh, businesses on, the, on endorsements there. As Susan said, some she's getting a read for the community through the church groups and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, the high school, you know, the fact that Olivia has come here and, and expressed her interest, you know that the high, there are high school students that want this. You know that there are church groups and aware groups that want this. And uh, in uh, the town of Rocky Hill, for instance, we have a high school student, she's 16, uh, Krishna Lawrence, and she spoke to the uh, committee, the task force there, and uh, brought with her a petition from her high school with 100 students on it, and um, she had talked to a few businesses. And the people on the task force were also very familiar with how people thought in town. Um, in Stonington, two high schoolers, uh, Helen Gross and Sarah uh, uh, Bernstein, uh, said uh, they had a good read on their uh, friends and, and families. And uh, we had a community leader like Susan uh, who came in. His name is Jason Hine. And uh, he spoke on behalf of a lot of groups. We also had uh, previously passed a plastic bag, single-use plastic bag ban, plastic ban in both Groton and Stonington. And so during that time, we talked to people about climate emergencies and backing a carbon fee and stuff like that. And we found support there. Another resource we use is the Yale Climate Change Communications Group. Uh, and that program uh, basically surveys uh, all the counties of the United States. And their database shows that the majority, 65 in some cases, depending on the question, up to 85% of the people in Connecticut uh, in red or green areas, red or blue areas, uh, want action on climate. And they see it as human, largely human induced and uh, as a serious thing and an emergency. So we use that database from Yale. We also talk to community members like Susan has been doing. And uh, the, then, you know, uh, bringing it to you is really critical because you are members of your community and you have some idea of what's going on there. And we trust you. And so with stuff that Susan mentions, stuff that we know the state has surveyed, and working with you, we feel that's a, a good way to step forward. Uh, so when we got it passed in Middletown, uh, that was led by a Citizens Climate Lobby uh, volunteer, Jen Kleindienst, and uh, she joined the task force, the climate task force, and uh, basically laid it all out, same thing that we've done here. 
And uh, they brought it to the council without a lot of other community stuff because they felt that that task force, the fact that it had been made, was a strong indication that the community want this kind of thing to move forward. So, um, and they passed it. So uh, that's, that's one of our early successes in Citizens Climate Lobby is getting Middletown to pass that. Um, when New Haven passed their uh, climate emergency resolution, uh, they did it because some students showed up and said, this is our future. If you guys don't do this, you don't care about us. So there were some very direct words coming from high schoolers. And um, I am currently in California. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law needed, needed some urgent family help. We drove across the country, never stopping to eat anywhere. And oh. uh, uh, it, to see the country and the condition it's in, during this pandemic, uh, I have my mask here. We're wearing them in the house. Uh, and seeing what we're up against, uh, the level of this climate emergency, I cannot state enough. I drove through disadvantaged communities all across the South on Highway 40. And uh, you can just see everything that's impacting the citizenry of the United States because of fossil fuels. So it just fortified me in terms of needing get all of us to pass these climate resolutions and then move on to more pro even more proactive things after that. But this is step one. And so I hope that answers your questions. We got a lot of community support. The fact that you guys are here is huge. And the fact that you can sp speak openly, politely and listen is what we need all across the country. And we believe that Connecticut can actually be a leader in the United States in this effort. No state has fully passed a climate emergency resolution and no state has passed anything that would put a price on carbon, which would be the next step. And uh, if we do that here in Connecticut, that's huge. That's what we're after. And that's how we base our decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, those, those are great comments, Roger. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the heartfeltness behind them as well. Mm. Thank Speaking you. A lot of conviction. That's kind of cool. So anything else for public audience? Hearing none, we'll close public audience um, and we'll move on to the rest of the agenda. Next item is meeting minutes, review and approval from the last go round. Floor is open. I had just two minor, um, <clears throat> minor edits, um, just spelling of community choice aggregation, not aggregate, and then a typo. Um, what, I, what I can do, I'll note these and um, I'll ask Sherry who did these. Uh, she just, I think she just sent a PDF around. If she can get me, I'll ask her for the Word version and then um, I'll get those corrected and um, uh, to, the, to the town for, for, I think all of our other agendas and meeting minutes are up on our, our, our website, but I don't know if anybody else had anything. Well, the draft, um, uh, I, I definitely edited online <laughs> on the on our Google Docs folder. The dra the draft of the of last one of the uh, October minutes. I thought it was, uh, we only had a PDF. No, it's on. It's in the it's in the folder. Either that, or I just mm. wrote on something that I have no idea what it is. Kind of looked like our last minutes. <laughs> it's not in the meeting minutes folder. It's in the one above it. Not in the meeting materials folder. No, no. It's in like 2020. Um, I think just in 2020, at the base of that. I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with. Oh, that. oh. There it is. All right. Okay, and then she sent around a PDF, so it's right there. Yeah. Then so, I will, oh, so you, you made edits as well. Yeah, I just had a couple of reasonably small comments. Um, let me see if I can find them now that I made them. You know, under section five, um, I, I was I was unclear about not. Um, Cherry inquired if there would be any impact with this declaration, and. I, well, actually, that change went away. 
Um, I think the question was, did, will there be any fiscal impact from that? Will the town be required to spend money as a result? Because that was something we were all concerned about. I'll, I'll re-edit I'll re this. Um, and then in the end of that sentence, none but the Board of Selectmen could choose to allocate restrictions. I suggested wording that says allocate funding or restrict the scope of the declaration. And if I've missed something there, somebody else correct me. That was my recollection anyway. Okay. And then this one's a nitnoid where it says down right before 6 p.m. Bob feels like climate emergency is the umbrella to all of this. It should be of, not off. That, yeah, that was the typo I was talking about too. Yep. And then, um, Mark, this is, <laughs> this is a result of the emails we traded today. It says in item six, you suggested we support the network by signing a letter. I think you told me we voted and I just totally spaced that. If we there was vote. a vote, we voted and we agreed, right? Yeah. So we should, that should be in here as well. Okay. And then my comments are inserted in the document. So you'll okay. see. So I'll make those other ones. And um, once we approve these and I'll get those too. Okay, and I'll just color. God, I hate Google Docs. <laughs> I just have no flipping idea how to use this stupid thing. All right, so I just did something. I'm not sure if it'll show up or not, but hey, it's there. Yeah, you can you can see the see your trail. I, I don't know how to save in here. So. Basically, it, it it saves instantaneously whenever you do anything. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, I've had some comments in here that disappeared, so I'm not buying it. Okay, so that's my comments. Anything else on the minutes? Um, do I hear a motion to approve with, with changes? Somebody, anybody? No, moved. Okay. Second. So moved seconded by Phil, seconded by Tim. By Tim, okay. Oh, he's so small, I can't tell. <laughs> um, wait, I have to get him now. I gotta start taking notes again. Jesus. Sorry, man. Okay. Rock and roll. Uh, back to the agenda. Okay. Next item. Um, update on sustainable CT. That would be Sherry's item. Mark, do you have an update? I, I don't. Um... Mike? And did you shed that as well? <laughs> I know you're trying to pare down. Do you no, have I, any updates? No. And Tom, do you know, are we meeting, Ray, do you know, or is there a meeting Wednesday? Ray, you're muted. Um, she hasn't mentioned it to me, but I can reach out to her and check. I just, ha I have it on my calendar and I'm not. Um, I'm yeah, not I had a similar, I had it as on the calendar, but I have not heard anything specific about um, Usually I wait for her to reach out with the mission like that to set it up, but I can always just double check. Okay. So no, no update really. All right. So we will skip that item. Can we table it and keep it for next month? Yeah, that we, I think we, we that's like a standing agenda item. Yeah, so. I think so as well. Hang on, I'm multitasking again. That's dangerous. All right, moving right along. Um, residential efficiency campaign. Mark, you want to update us on that? Yes. So Tom and I went before the Board of Selectmen um, recently. Was it November 9th? Was it? Um, I believe so. And uh, we presented the, uh, the the basic idea, the basic concept of doing a campaign to promote home energy solution um, audits or assessments. Um, and it was enthusiastically received. Um, and um, so we're, we're laying the groundwork for, um, for, for the campaign. And um, there's a couple, couple things going on there. One is we've drafted a letter um, 
it's a little long, but it's got a, you know, a lot of good information about the audits and about the current incentives and how you do it, how you can get one. Um, and so we want to actually talk about whether we want to do a mailing or do rely on social media or use other means. So we'll come back to that. But we have we have the letter. I can put it on the screen if we want. Um, we're planning a short program on Sinsbury Community TV. Um, it's going to be basically Eric and I will do a short introduction. Eric Wellman and I will do a short introduction. Uh, we'll look sort of Q&A. Um, and then... Um, We'll have, uh, and then I, and then I will interview Mitch Gross from uh, from Eversource uh, to basically just give people the basic information about about home energy solution assessments and um, how you can get one, why you should get one now. Um, so and then that will air on SCTV. Um, the other thing that we're um, considering is this is a um, potential uh, project where we could get a matching grant from Sustainable CT. And it kind of depends on whether we do the mail, the letter mailing or not. I mean, I mean, a letter mailing is kind of expensive, or if we have any other ex expenses, then um, what you do for, to get one of these grants from Sustainable CT is you set up, you go to this website called Patronicity, and you, <clears throat> you, do, you, have, to, you have to crowdfund the, the, whole, the whole you know project. I have to get at least 20 people to donate. Um, and this, the Clean Energy Task Force, we, I kind of um, worked out an agreement with Sustainable CT. The uh, Clean Energy Task Force could take from our funds and put in $1,000, up to $1,000, and that would get matched. So that's something we could, uh, but if we're going to do that, um, we need to go, Tom would go back before the Board of Selectmen to get a, get approval on uh on, on, on basically receiving a grant. So where, so where we are is we've got approval from the board of selectmen to, to do a campaign. Um, we're going to get this little Sinsbury community TV program done this week. And um, so the, really the, the, I think the biggest question is how, how, how do we want to promote this? Um, and let's just throw out a couple of alternatives. I think you had some ideas, Tom, but what, one is this, is this letter, um, you know, do, do a mailing. Um, Tom, you said something about um, setting up a, a Facebook page for the sustainable CT or sustainable Simsbury. Yeah, no, I think, I think, you know, it, it's tricky in finding the right target audience and it's unique in that we are promoting an existing program, um, which again, we're encouraging people to jump on it now, just because I think, everything says it's a great time to do it. Um, the only thing I think that's may work against this is just the concern people may have about um, a technician coming into their house during these um, difficult times. Um, when we did the Solarize Simsbury campaign a number of years ago, it essentially started with a letter to every single residential homeowner in, in town. Um, and that's kind of how we kicked the campaign off. The question now, so many years later is, is a paper letter the right way to go? Or is it that we do something through social media, either with a Facebook page um, or something along those lines and try to get more word of mouth, neighbor to neighbor recommendations? Um, I think I said probably a few too, too many times, but my story with this is my, um, my brother told me he had done the wise use program years ago. And, 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 you know, he's telling me, and it took him probably five minutes to explain it to me because I'm a little slow about, you know, call the number on your, on your bill and somebody will come out to your house and change your light bulbs and you will save money. I, it just didn't sound right. But having heard it from somebody uh, who said they did it, I called and I saved money the very next month. And um, as I said to the board of selectmen, that was really my beginning of being very excited about energy efficiency. It was real. It was tangible. And I think if this program works for people in Simsbury the way it did for me, if we get that first 15 or 20 people to sign up and then start putting it out on Facebook that I did this, I saved money. Um, I, I think it may grow very organic. And, you know, we could do another, um, I, I talked to, to Simsbury Community TV about possibly doing a filming of an assessment of um, and maybe even one of the one of one, one of the selectmen uh, was quite excited, and maybe we'll get them to uh, to let us film uh, their their assessment going on. 
um, the the incentives just to pick just to sort of uh, um, you know emphasize what you're saying, Tom. I think people know the uh, the there is no copay now, so the assessment is free, and the they beefed up some of the um, rebates and incentives. The, the the rebates for or incentives for insulation are great. Basically, I think it's two dollars and twenty per square foot. Basically, your your insulation for your roof is free, and for walls it's like half price. So it's really a valuable thing right now. That's through the end of the year. They hope to extend it through March 31st. Um, so you know we have we have we have a little time. So I, I got to tell you, I I'm not a big fan of letters. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a real race to see which gets discarded first and over is something going to an overcrowded inbox or something that shows up in the mail. Um, I love the Facebook idea and and will add, if we put up a page, you know, there are these community groups within Simsbury or Simsbury Neighbors Unite. There's Simsbury Neighbors Helping Neighbors. There's three or four of these things at least. And what we need to do is put ours up and start people that are members of these other groups. They're closed groups, but they have huge, huge roles. Then we share our announcements on there, perhaps share the video. I love the video idea, you know, do one of the selectmen's houses and just share it and just say, hey, same deal, your house, let's go. No cost, you know, and, and, and then start to develop some testimonials as Tom suggested, you know, okay, I did this, They, I had these guys in my house. They did X, Y, and Z. I expect to save money. You don't even have to have the real savings yet. Just need those testimonials and share them on Facebook and they'll spread like wildfire. And then the crazies will come out of the woodwork and we'll have to have that discussion, but that's a separate issue. I agree with Bob. So yeah, I, I, think the, I think the social media is the best outlet. I think the mail, if you could figure out a way to break into the, I know there's this huge market now for text messaging. If we get a database, I don't know what that costs per mailer, but there's companies now that you, I'm sure have gotten text messages from random stuff. But um, I think that social media is a much, uh, I mean, you can pay for ads on Facebook that can get pushed out as well. That's a fraction of the price compared to um, mailers. And to the video idea, I, I use green screens in my classroom all the time. That's something easy. We just got to make sure that the video that we do put together, whether SCTV does it or not, it's, it's got to be like a 90 second clip. I'm sure the audit lasts longer than 90 seconds, but just for people's attention span, just being cognizant of that. And yeah, we can dump it into every group that um, Simsbury has. And there's, there's a lot of groups that have multiple of the same people, but we can get it out to them there. That's that's a really good thought. When when if we're when we're in the studio there, we should um, not only do this, you know, probably twenty minute or twenty five minute thing, but also one or two shorter ones. That's a great idea. Yeah, and I th I gotta say, I think if you film the whole audit and then you pull ninety second clips out, that gives us you know ten things to share or whatever, and we dole those out in some metered fashion to where we're continually having that presence on Facebook, you know, and, and I get you know, a text messaging and all that. I think in a town like Simsbury, the best way to share something is on these, these pages. I mean, dear God, the things that fly around there in anybody, is anybody else on Simsbury Neighbors Unite? Special. Oh, there's, a there's a bunch. It's special. I, I think the Sims very confidential is very special. <laughs> oh, I'm not on that one. I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> it's all the same people. They just keep creating new groups. Yeah, to be more exclusive, I think. Yeah. Wait, I didn't say that out loud. That was supposed to be an inside thought. Well, I'm on I'm on I grew up in Simsbury. Ooh. See, I don't even know about all these groups. This is great. So if everybody's on one or two of these groups, yeah. then we can fly through this thing. Well, and, and, and I'll tell you just from my experience with Solarize, um, well, we did two programs where we talked about um, mailing. We did the Solarize and we had also briefly looked at doing a uh, textile recycling that had a mailer component. 
And I was surprised that people were watching the board of selectmen meeting, not people who were in the audience, people watched it, who called my office the next day and were actually very upset that we were going to give out their name and address to somebody. Yeah, I know it, it seems odd. So I think the Facebook it's, it's, we're putting it out there, but we're putting it at a place that I think feels appropriate for the community. It, it's not too aggressive. I, um, I'm, I'm going to say the text messaging idea to me, I, I would think um, I would not be comfortable with being marketed via text message. Yeah, I, I think the, the Facebook stuff's free and it's easy and it's super effective. <laughs> you know, and, and Phil, this might be a good one for you. I know when we had kicked this around, you had talked about some other ideas, not just Facebook. I, I, naturally, you can um, you can if if you were to advertise, you can uh, cross post to Instagram. Um, that would absolutely hit a, a different group, um, and it, it would still be it's it's a simple button check on Facebook to enable the cross post. Um, I, I think for for Simsbury, you know, the the group made some really you know. The, those groups are, are you're going to get a large portion of the population. Um, and so <clears throat> any, you know, I, I think that that would be a good first step. I think that's, that's a, you know, a pretty sizable audience that you'd be able to target for Facebook. It's not going to catch everyone. Um, talk through some, you know, some other ideas. I, I'm going to reach out to uh, at least a couple of the realtors in town and see what they have currently underway for um, for sharing about the wise use um, access line to see if they do anything at all with that today. Because I'd, it may be easy enough to, to work with them to, you know, whether it's a printout of the letter we were going to produce or you know, something more graphically appeasing, I think um, that that's kind of low hanging fruit to be able to either, you know, in some kind of, um, you know, there, there's plenty of opportunities I'm, I'm sure they have to to give out literature. And, and so hopefully if that exists, I would like to target that as well. One, one really interesting idea that you bring up with the realtors is if you want Mark with the letter is possibly doing a much smaller targeted campaign with the um, letters to anybody who has recently had a real estate transaction, whether they refinanced or just recently closed. It's somebody who's clearly taking either their new homeowner or they at least care enough about saving a dollar that they refinanced. It might, it might, you know, again, it would be a much smaller cost keeping it small like that. We could, uh, I you know, that would be an alternative also to, to doing the, even approaching the realtors, because that would grab the same population. It may be easier to, I don't know how simple it would be to get that info. The other thing that Phil, you make me think of here is that um, there is going to be a population that's not on Facebook, right? <laughs> so, I mean, is it, is it the, do we, you know, put stuff up at the senior center? You know, yeah, I mean, I'm not on Facebook. It's a lot of people my age not on there as well. And so you have to, the, and, and a lot of us are also buying homes. So I think um, targeting them through what Tom said is a good opportunity, but, but yeah, sorry. To, no, 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 that's talk. interesting. I, I think you, that's a really good point because there's a, there is a backlash against Facebook. There's a whole bunch of people that have left Facebook because it's like, oh, really, I need to see this every day. Why? You know, I used to keep up with family, but I feel your pain. So that's that's um, something to keep uh, in the core. Honestly, one of the best use cases I've found for Facebook is is literally what's going on in town. And so here we are, um, the perfect opportunity to use Facebook for for that reason. Use it for the power of good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. What else we got? Anything else on the efficiency campaign? Well, I think I would just need to get confirmation, Mark, if, if it's kind of a couple couple uh, action steps for me in terms of what would go to the Board of Selectmen. We can easily request the um, Facebook page. If you, as a group, think we should do the Instagram page, we could um, make that request. Um, I don't think the town has any Instagram pages officially yet. And then the other thing would be is if we're going to go with the lower um, – 
footprint approach, lower cost approach, do we want to stay in, in the grant or do we want to back away from the grant? I would back away from the grant. I think it, it is, it is, um, it's, it's a bit of work and, you know, th this crowdfunding is great for something like, you know, building a, a pollinator pathway or something where you've got a group of people, they're excited and you put it on Facebook and they're all pitching 10, $25. And, and this is, we're asking people to help fund the campaign to promote energy efficiency. And it's, we, we might, you know, scrape our families and friends together to get 20 donors, but we're not going to raise a lot, a lot of money. And so I, I would, and if, it doesn't sound like we're going to need a big budget. Um, so I would, I would skip the whole matching grant thing. If we do want to spend some money on a smaller mailing or boost some ads on Facebook, we do have, you know, some funds that we can use. That's, that would be my suggestion. Okay, great. And thoughts on Instagram versus just starting off with Facebook? I, th I think what you can do is if you were to, so there's two routes, you can create a Facebook and, and have it create an Instagram and also have it populate based on what you're putting on Facebook. I don't know if there's a real value add in doing that. The other thing you can do is make the Facebook. If we choose to advertise, to pay for advertisement, there's a box we can check then as long as we're using an image to also advertise on Instagram for the same thing. Perfect. The other thing about Instagram is I think a lot of the people that have that have bailed on Facebook, particularly the young people, because like old people like us got on it. Um, and then they said, we're not using that anymore. And then it, they really communicate through Instagram. Yep. So dependent on it, that may be yet another demographic that we don't get with Facebook. Yep. Um, and Tom, um, you were saying you were when you and I spoke before. You mentioned that um, you were um, going to be setting up a Facebook page for the Sustainable Simsbury. Um, that is that is correct. My sense is, but I want to hear what other people think that we don't need a second Facebook page. Let's work with the Sustainable Simsbury Facebook page. Um, because clean energy is really in the topic of sustainability. And I think to have a second page that we're trying to keep active and put things on is, is I think in the, in the, in the public eye, sustainability and so sustainability is broader than energy, but I think energy would fit well on that page. Okay. What I, what I would say to that is, um, you and Sherry have a conversation. Let me know whichever way you guys want to go. She had some concerns about mixing the messages on a page as opposed to having two standalone pages. I kind of like the idea of one higher trafficked page, but from my end, it's super easy. Um, the only hard part is um, just as a, a, a matter of policy, we have to go through the board of selectmen to request any new social media outlets. And then officially, um, somebody in my office, hopefully not me, will be named kind of the moderator for that, just in case. Huh, I'm looking at you, Ray. <laughs> no, it's definitely Carrie's. <laughs> so I, I, I can talk to Sherry about whether we do two or one, but uh, any other thoughts, folks? I'm not a big fan of mixing it. I think that Sustainable CT has a mission that, uh, you know, is around the certification and around kind of the bigger picture sustainability issues. Facebook pages are a dime a dozen. I, I say we set one up and whether it, maybe it's a clean energy task force Facebook page that we use in the future, or maybe it's, you know, just specifically for this campaign, but I think we do something and then you cross share. You know? Yeah, I agree with that. I think that we should just probably just have one if we could. It's a, it's a lot easier, less to keep track of. I mean, the, the Fairfield Clean Energy Task Force has renamed themselves the Fairfield Sustainability Team. And um, I feel like, I mean, we, we could do we, we could do two, but um, it's going to get less traffic. And I think the so, other thing so is we, we ask for two of and we decide later to make one, that doesn't require any kind of board action. Right, right. If we start with one and want to split it, we, we have to go back to the board. Not, you know, not a huge lift. It's one one Monday night for me and maybe Mike. Now let's do a CATF Facebook page. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it to you and Sherry, Mark. That's my input. But Tom, you got to go to the board of selectmen and get approval to create these. That's correct. Mark, did I understand you to say that if we were to go after a grant, 
we would have to go to the Board of Selectmen to get approval for that? Yes. Do we not still have a special revenue account that we can bring money into? Remember that whole issue we were getting aquarium grants and we had to go and the whole windmills on the mountain thing? Yeah, Bob, if I, if I can jump in, just um, it's, it's just a matter of process. And what the concern arose years ago is that the members of the Board of Selectmen would be concerned that they wanted to make sure any grants the town received didn't come with um, any requirements that would bind them at some future date to do something different than maybe that they had, had thought to do. So you, for example, if we were to take a historic preservation grant on the public works building, which then at some later date would prohibit us from adding a bay. Right. Or yeah, that makes sense. Valerium. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in, I'm in accord. All right. What else we got? Anything on this? All right. Let's move to the next item. Speeding right along. Update to the energy plan. I'm assuming that's just supposed to say energy plan, not energy play. Yep. Just checking, you know. Mark, do you want to lead? Yeah, I um, I don't have a lot to report here. Um, I think what we said last time is let's turn the, the, the year over so that this now is the 2021 energy plan. Um, so I, did, I didn't make any progress on it, but I think what each of us should do is take a look at the, um, the 2020 plan and particularly page 10 that has our one year and our five year plan. And let's see what we want to what we want to change there. Maybe change some of the pictures, um, if we've got anything, um, and sort of the you know the introduction. So I guess I uh, I don't know if anybody else you know looked at it or had any input, but I that's uh, that's all I have at this point. I spent a few minutes in it tonight, Mark, because I couldn't find it. <laughs> um, I actually wrote a note to Mark today. It said one of our 2021 resolutions should be to declutter our Google Drive. Um, but I, the one thing that I added, I added a couple of comments in it um, in terms of both transportation and renewable energy, um, that we should add goals around advocacy. So, you know, we that our transportation part talks about um, electrifying our transportation network in Simsburg. As part of that, we have to advocate for greening the grid because if we're charging a whole bunch of electric vehicles and we got coal plants feeding our oil plants feeding the grid, that's not a very useful thing. So I added an advocacy piece just in a comment. I didn't put it anywhere in particular. And I did the same thing on, um, I think it's renewable energy, suggesting that we, we advocate for new, for, um, either guidance or even better, some rules around uh, new construction CapEx projects going forward should include renewables. They should by, by definition include renewables. And also that the fiscal cost benefit analysis we do on any CapEx spending in town should include whole costs, energy costs going forward, you know, even, even carbon equivalent if we get that far where maybe a longer term goal to if we have a price on carbon to include those numbers in our calculus of what we're going if we're going to build a project and what we're going to build. So I think they're a little bit longer term goals. Maybe the CapEx stuff can happen quickly and the, um, the advocacy around transportation and grid. But I think, I think we have to get, just like everything we've done, we started out with really narrowly focused, you know, local things. Now we've got to start spreading out a little bit to the state level. And there's so much, you know, with what Susan and Roger are doing, you know, the letter that came out from uh, Clean Energy or the, all the task forces, Clean Water Action. There's a lot of, of foment. There's a lot of momentum here. And I think it's the right time to start adding stuff like this to our goals. So that's all I did. I'll continue to go through it this in the next month. All right. And why don't you send around what you've done and, um, so we can all, you know, in, in, in advance of our next meeting. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody... The, uh, the piece that, that you sent me a link to today is what I'm editing on. And I'm just, you know, it has my name on it. Where I've, okay. And I'm, I'm not edit, changing bullets. I'm just adding comments to the side. So okay. they're visible without obliterating anything. All right. I, um, so that's the, in the drive. Then I'll, I'll, I'll send that around to folks so everybody will have it. Yeah, send that. 
I still don't even know where it is. I just got the link that you sent. <laughs> yeah, I use that. It is a little um, convoluted how to get there. Because it's yeah, it's not it's not in like CETF. Or it's not in energy, the energy plan folder. I don't think. Am I right about that? It's, it's a subfolder of that, and it's like drafts or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm taking notes. Sorry, I will be silent for a moment. So the next thing is our resolution, our draft resolution. Yep. All right, let's move to that. Unless there's any other comments on energy part. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you that we do have a 6.30 out that we have to hit, so just. Okay. Oh, are they gonna cut us off at 6.30? Oh, but I will. <laughs> yeah, I'm meeting after this. Nice, nice. No, yeah, that's, that's good. Um, but I think let's let's get started. Um, yep. Everybody has it, I think. So I don't know. Can you look at it, or should I put it up on the screen? Is everybody able to look at it? Yeah, you can put it up. I have it here as well. So. Um, and before we sort of wordsmith or jump in, maybe, um, yeah. Let me let me stop sharing. Let's let's not let's not jump on, on the on to on the words yet. Let's, um, let's get a sense of maybe where people are on um, the, the whole idea of, of of doing something like this. It it is. I, th I think this would be the most uh, the boldest move this task force, I dare say, uh, has taken. Probably the most controversial. Um, and um, so, yeah, just kind of where, where and, 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 and I want to say one more thing. Where, where we, I think, were last week, we started to talk about it. And so, um, but it was kind of, it was very intangible. So I said, well, let me just throw together a, you know, a draft. This is not a, you know, the final document. But, um, you know, so we have something sort of in our, um, in our minds that, that we can see and we can, and, and, and we can, so it's real. Um, and this, as you can imagine, was a lot of cutting and pasting. Um, I took a lot from the Middletown plan. There were some other documents out there. Um, um, I wrote a little bit of it myself. I pulled some stuff from um, Governor Lamont's executive order. So this stuff about um, you know the, the international and then state state issues. But um, any any thoughts before we just jump in on sort of the you know the the wording? Yeah, I just had one question about, because it seemed very continuous, and then Roger alluded to it in his cross-country trip. On the second page, it kind of just takes a turn to talk about um, uh, different populations of people. And I was just curious to the thought of that addition. It just, it flowed, and then all of a sudden, right there in the middle there, is that the one I was talking about? Or uh, the second one, the black and indigenous of other communities of color. Yep. I was just curious because I kind of read this as like a whole human thing. But if if you could, I mean, Roger alluded to it as in, in terms of his cross country trip. Um, and maybe that's where it's coming from. I was just curious because as I was reading it, I got it, I got it. And then I was just like, I kind of, question where that came from. Yeah, I think the sense, am I, uh, uh, the, the sense of, um, or the, you know, the purpose of that, whereas, is just to acknowledge that, you know, um, this, this idea of um, environmental equity or environmental justice, that um, it's not evenly distributed, um, you know, uh, the 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 well off are um, are suffering a lot less from the impacts of you know and and will suffer a lot less um, so that you know to try to solve solve this or address this or even think it through without also acknowledging that um, it, you know it really hits the um, the the you know the people who have caused caused the problem in the least 
it hit, hits them the most. So it's just kind of an acknowledgement of that, I think. And it, and then I think that um, it picks it up, I think, a little bit in one of the, in, in point six, recon, recognize environmental justice as a racial racial justice issue, which the town commits to address and understand that the, an equitable transition requires full participation of different organizations. So it's kind of in there, but. I, you know, just kind of, again, not not jumping into the words yet. Um, I'll, I'll confess that I've, I have not typically been a strong advocate of kind of bold proclamations or, you know, resolutions. Um, you know, I think if you look at a lot of the work that we're doing, it's running campaigns. We're trying to get more solar built. We're trying to get people to reduce their energy usage through efficiency and, um, you know, really tangible, tangible things and replace lighting. And, um, and yet, so, you know, this was not high on my list. Um, but I have to say, I'm, 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 I'm much more open to this than I used to be. And, um, and my hope is that, you know, if we do it, and if we do it in a, in an inclusive way that engages the community and gets and gets, you know, gets input, that it will actually have have a real impact, right? It's not just words. That it will actually um, carry the conversation further and um, get a sense that, yeah, you know, that that we in the town, you know, as the town, just acknowledge that racial, um, you know, that racial issues are a are a public health issue. That the town, yes, acknowledges that we have an emergency here, and we and so as we do things like the things you were just talking about, Bob, you know, the capital capital uh, planning and uh, you know build, uh, building new buildings and and permitting and things that sort of everything we do now we have to start to see it through that lens so anyway that's kind of just where I am high level on this yeah let me let me pick up on that if I may um, I, I have to say Mark and I see this I think quite similarly um, I have never been a fan of these kind of and don't don't read this wrong please but these kind of hysterical, you know, the sky is falling, chicken little kind of stuff. Because I think it detracts from what we try to accomplish. Now, let me contradict myself now. <laughs> um, and I have to say, Susan, when you first came to us and started talking about declaring a climate emergency, my first my gut reaction was, oh, God, no, yeah, maybe not. So I think when you consider like what Mark was just discussing, the kind of work that we've tried to do, kind of quiet, kind of just steady forward, you know, change your light bulbs, solar power, efficiency, you know, um, information, knowledge kind of thing. It's not enough. It is not enough at this stage of the game. And I gotta tell you, you know, I also, I'm not a big hero guy, Greta Thunberg's talk at the UN was it was a watershed moment in this in this fight, and you know her "how dare you" kinds of things. They've they've motivated me, you know, and I'm I'll, I'm not ashamed to admit it, you know. And I and I have I have a child, an adult child, that never wants to have children because this world's a mess, you know. Um, it is an emergency. And, and what I see a declaration like this doing at this point in the game is sort of providing a touchstone. So if we do declare an emergency, if we say publicly as a town, climate is an emergency, that becomes the foundation and the reason for so much of what else we do. It becomes a framework around which we hang or onto which we hang the things that we do. Okay, well, it's an emergency, so we should do this. It's an emergency, so we should think about how we build. Well, everything, question everything. I'm not saying change everything, you don't tear down the system, but question everything. You know, Tom, you buy a lot of services every year. You are one of the guys that actually looks at these services and says, how can I make them better? But there's a lot of people in town that don't do that, you know? 
I mean, we have a great large addition about three doors away from my house in Henry James Middle School, Memorial School. That, in my opinion, is an environmental disaster. They absolutely did no thinking about it. And when they were questioned in one of the meetings, you know, what are you doing around energy? The answer was best available technology, which is contractor speak for nothing. I know, because I was a contractor like that for a long time. Um, I think this thing's important. I think we have to take this on. Um, the, the other thing that I'll add, and I, and I had a really similar reaction to Tim uh, when I read the, the EJ stuff. You know, EJ is important. Environmental justice is important. Um, climate disproportionately affects minority, low-income, non-white populations. This is just a fact. And there's a lot of reasons for it. And it's, you know, you could spend several six packs of beer discussing that. Um, I am not sure it belongs in this document. It is, it, I'm a bit of a pragmatist. I want this thing approved. I want this to become part of Simsbury's policy. I think that is, although it's a, it's a valid and true and very important aspect of this, I'm not sure it helps us to get a climate emergency declared. Um, the only thing that, that I would argue with myself on that is that they just declared racial injustice a public health hazard. So if we're gonna tie climate to public health, which is a pretty damn easy thing to do, and Simsbury's focused on racial injustice and racial imbalance as a public health hazard, perhaps that does help us. So I just argued both sides of the coin, but I wanted to make sure I got that all on the record. Now well, I have to figure out how to take notes of coins, you're always right. Well, exactly, I'm not wrong in any case in this one though. Because he's taking the notes today. Yeah, I'm taking notes and I have none of this down yet. That's why I wanted to know if we have um, recordings. <laughs> I'll uh, opine in favor of, of that line um, for, for this simple reason that if you take a look at our membership of this board, there is no one representing the needs of that minority community. And by including that, we are making certain that that is included in the conversation. Yeah, said the old white guys, right? Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm, I, 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 unless others disagree, I'm, I'm hearing a strong sense that this is something we really want to um, look a lot more closely at. We want to you know, dig into this document. Uh, one thing I, you know, I, I, I would suggest we not distribute it, you know, around yet. Let's sort of wordsmith it ourselves because I think it's going to change. This was a really, you know, uh, wild first draft. Um, and um, and I think at some point I think we need to do a little working ourselves and and sort of um, discreetly um, reach out to some to some people get some input. I don't know whether it makes sense to sit down with um, any of the um, town officials. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea yet, Tom. If I if I can do my part, and remember my part is just to help guide the team. I I, I don't get a vote. Um, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. Um, I think um, the part, the first part's easy where you have your whereases and you're trying to outline and frame. And I think you're off to a very good start. The part that you need to get um, the language cleaned up a little bit and definitely understand your target audience and so that we can get buy-in. Because if you push certain items, you, you, you wanna make sure this gets passed by the board of selectmen. And then again, it's um, so just a few things that jumped out really quickly is um, creating a new um, entity to do this. I don't think would be the best as opposed to making this either a goal of the clean energy task force. And you can then have a subcommittee focused on it, but you don't want to create a, a whole nother new entity. Um, the other thing is, um, no, no board or commission or elected person can direct a department head. There's only one person who can direct a department head, and that's the town manager. So just take, take out anything that, that, for tripping. 
And then what I would probably recommend is, is once you, you start to tighten up where you want to be in terms of your eight goals, I definitely think it would make sense before you get too far along to at least have a casual conversation with a few members of the board of selectmen. Tom, question for you is in, I mean, thank you for that input. And I think those are really good um, suggestions. Is, is this, my sense is this may be a level too high for things about CapEx considerations and whole, whole life cycle costs in, in construction. And what made me think of it is that direct all town and we're going to get rid of direct, obviously. No, but I think, I think it's funny because for years, one of the things that, that I've, you know, and it's frustrating for me at times because um, I sometimes spend so much time doing my job. I don't have time to do some of the grand planning. And one of the things would be even when we buy vehicles that we'd love to be able to get enough data so that we can, you know, we buy a lot of vehicles different things. So even the trucks we buy, wouldn't it be great year over year to look and say, you know, brand A, although it may have a higher initial cost, we're getting better fuel economy, lower repair costs, and a higher resale value. Yep. Let's spend that money on something that's going to have a better value, which in turn is also going to be more environmentally conscious because everything's connected. Everything is, um, you know, um, same thing when we just did a minor um, addition to our public works building, I kept pushing the contractor the whole time. Can we buy, get more insulation? Where can we get better windows? Where can we get, because again, you spend 10 or 15% more up front, and you're going to save maybe 10 or 15% of your heating bill for the next 20 years. Right. Right. Uh, but I'm not sure if this is where you were going, but one w one question I had when I was drafting this was, how prescriptive do we want it to be? I mean, do we, do we want you know, what we've kind of got here is a um, you know, have the department heads um, kind of put together a plan, and we're going to create this climate action plan. That's really kind of all we're saying here. Or should we be more specific with goals about reducing greenhouse gases or electrification or procurement or whatever. So that's a, that's a question. Well, that was, that was kind of where I was going with the question about, is this, is this too high level a document to start getting that prescriptive? You know, it's funny because years ago, I know we talked about doing an energy plan where the intent was to be very prescriptive and to set goals of, we want to reduce our energy by X within this given time frame. And we even, I know we went to the trouble of looking at all of our fuel, fuel economies of all of our vehicles. And I, you know, and again, and I don't want you guys to, for a second to think I'm sh saying shoot the bar low, but it would be great to start a conversation beyond just this committee with what are we doing to look at the energy use in our buildings? What are we doing to look at, um, as Bob put it, when we're going to construction right now, everything just by code, everybody loves to say, oh, it's lead silver or equivalent and it makes you feel good, but that's the bare minimum. So and there's no performance monitoring on that either. No. The, the, the one thing I wonder, though, is, is this document, a declaration, are we just potentially referencing and follow the plan mm -hmm. or and refer to the plan rather than now this document may have to be living and breathing? Like, it, it would be nice to create something and have it be written in a way that is catch all of the future work that we may decide to do. I, I think, Phil, your, your, your concept there is absolutely perfect, which is you write something here that everybody can get behind the direction that you want to go, you know, and it's, we're going to head west, young man, but it's not, this is not the specific detailed roadmap of where we're making left turns and right turns. Because and the right, implementing not, framework comes later. Selectman to, you know, Again, let the high level board say, yes, you're heading in the right direction and we agree with this. And the sausage making will be on a different set of documents. Yeah, that was kind of my question too. And I, I think you're, it, my gut is that's correct. Um, and I mean, this becomes, a, this is a declaration. A, a declaration doesn't change later, right? And then, you know, maybe the, the implementation framework is something we develop once they say, yep, it's an emergency, which kind of goes back to my comment to you, Mark, about, you know, 
this is something that we then hang other pieces on. Yeah. Any other comments or questions about that? I, I mean, I think that what the action going forward is that we look at it, we each take a look at it, we, you know, um, perhaps include Roger's comments, <clears throat> um, add, detract, subtract, edit, and then maybe, can we, uh, do we have to have a noticed meeting if we have a working group around this? Does it have to become a special meeting? Does anybody know that? I think if you have a quorum, it does. If you stay below a quorum, it, it's just. Well, but then, but then aren't we going, we violating the sunshine rules if we stay below a quorum? Not if it's, if your goal is to specifically work on, on individual tasks and you're not looking to build or gain consensus. But I can confirm some of the specifics to that. I'm a general Robert's Rules of Order guy. I don't know some of yeah, the- Yeah, I am too. We can call a special meeting very easily, I think, right? Yeah. The, the, the only trick is with the, with the current COVID world that we're living in, if it's a special meeting, do we have to just make sure that it's being broadcast like this meeting is? Yeah. Yeah, see, that was kind of what I was asking. You don't need to have, uh, for if you're gonna have subcommittees, uh, Nothing has to be, you know, special about it. You can meet on the side and you don't have to televise it. I agree that it can't be like the whole whole group of people. Or you have to select two or three people and that's it. And that's maybe what you're saying about staying below the quorum. So maybe that's the approach is that we call it a subcommittee and, and yeah. just two or three of us get together and just work on this thing and try to get something back out to the team to look at. Subcommittee working group, yeah. Tom, to your point about not creating a new entity, um, I went back and forth on should the Clean Energy Task Force be doing all this or should we bring in another group um, you know, to create this Climate Emergency Mobilization Task Force? Um, well, I, I think, and we sort of touched on this earlier um, in our conversation, Mark, I think in some ways I know the way the town manager is looking at things is that we have sustainability, we have clean energy, we have recycling, all with similar direction. The one thing that I think sustainable or sustainability has above um, clean energy task force is it's meant to be holistic and it's meant to be somewhat of an umbrella that has tentacles into all of the other departments. And if, if, this goal is to affect change in departments within the town. Sustainable might be the right place for it. If you want to, again, take the much higher road and say, listen, we want the town um, leaders to recognize this, um, then it may be fine to come from the Clean Energy Task Force. And I, th I really think our goal you know, go back to what Phil said. I think our goal is to get the town leaders to get behind this. I think it's a very finite, very um, you know unitized goal, if you will. And then when we start talking about implementation, we start talking about you know procurement processes and that kind of thing. That may go to sustainable. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. So, Mark, I mean, I'm happy to help with the wording on this. Maybe you, me, who else? Get together and two or three of us. Okay. Anybody else want to play? All right, I guess you and me will do it. I'm, I definitely got interest. If 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 the times align and there's an open stop, a spot, I'd love to to chat with you guys. All right, cool. Yeah, and I think where we want to start, it sounds like the whereases are not the problem. We may, we may, you know, we, uh, we may want to redraft or maybe cut um, some of the wording on the on the environmental justice. But um, you know, I think I think, and again, before we get into you know, grammar, uh, we want to like how you know is the general approach other than we can't direct people direct department has to do things we need to you know make sure it's it's not we're not breaking the rules 
um, is the general approach taken that, yes, we want to have a climate action plan that spells out the direction and we want to engage the town to do that. Is, is that sort of the approach? Are we comfortable with the general approach spelled out in these, um, in these, in these therefores or, um, or do we want a, a wholly different way of thinking about it? So, so let's, so let's kind of, let's, let's, um, take this offline a smaller group and we'll, and then we'll just sort of send it around. I think at some point we want to, or, or let me, let me throw this out. Tell me what you, you, you all think, um, you know, do we want to, once we get a good draft that we're comfortable with, Tom, you suggested maybe talk to a couple of selectmen. How about a, a, a town forum? You know, it have to be on Zoom, but through the library where, where we, where we post the thing and invite anybody who has any, uh, any, any interest to, to weigh in? I, I, I guess I'd be leery about letting them wordsmith it, but getting kind of feedback and then going away and doing some work on our own based yeah. on what we hear, maybe. I think, you know, you got to take advantage of the fact that, you know, <laughs> the one thing that is nice is, you know, we always have room for one more on Zoom, so. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Tom, you know, the work you did with the bike pet, you know, you had a, you had a, you had a lot of engagement of people. Um, and it's hard to do that now in COVID, but um, I, think I think it's easier. Because Bob is Mr. Glass half full tonight. I like it. <laughs> well, it's easier because like all you got to do is log in, right? All right. Yeah, How many yeah. windows can you fit on your screen? Well, I think, I think again, you know, <laughs> my goodness, it sounds funny, but again, we have a use for our Facebook page, you know? And, and getting it out there and who's interested in what. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but even let the detractors get in there. Cause I think, you Oh, want that's not crazy. Yeah. And, and as crazy as this sounds, I, I got to keep pushing the crazy one on this is when we had the discussion on the um, solar at um, the large solar, the tobacco Valley solar, <laughs> as much as that was a terribly contentious meeting, it was unbelievably civil. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you, you, it's a little corny, but, you know, you saw the best. Uh, everybody disagreed, but they did so in a neighborly way. Yep. Yep. True statement. Yep. And I think to Roger's point, we want to engage the students in, in, in this in sort of drafting and, and get endorsements. And their voice is, you know, really important to come through here. So so we, I think we got a whole a whole. Um, process of community engagement that we can that we can flesh out yeah. as well i mean in in my mind what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do some work work on the document we'll come back at the next meeting we'll take a vote that we agree we should go forward with this and at that point we'll go do outreach we'll set up a community forum have a couple of meetings with selectmen and hopefully that won't take more than you know the, the month around the holidays or right after the holidays, and then we we'll come back to the next meeting and vote. Send this thing to BOS because I don't want to jerk around with it for months at a time. You know, I think we need to. We need. Yeah, to let's not. Let's not. Yeah, that's a great point. And um, Susan, Roger, welcome. You're, you know, you're. It sounds like you have some comments already. You send those to us. We're we're clearly in the early stages of thinking this through. Just in terms of timing with um, board of selectmen, just keep in mind the budget process is coming up. And so if you're very lucky, you might get in there before the budget process. But once the budget process really gets going, that tends to kind of be their focus. When did they start that, Tom? <laughs> we start that pretty much next week. The board of select okay. is going to really be starting on that um, very end of January through March. All right. Then maybe it, it, there is an opportunity to do this um, uh, right, mid-January. Yeah, mid Catch them on a cold winter's night. Right? Nobody wants to run away. Yep. Okay. All right, I'm done yep. with that. All right. Well, this is going to be a hard set of minutes. All right. Um, hey, okay. Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for coming. We're adjourning. Hi. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. I did not see the email Friday. <laughs> I was getting ready for this 6.30 meeting and I was looking for the uh, dial in and noticed that it was at five o'clock. So I apologize for my lateness. No problem. You can go watch the movie on, uh, you know, on YouTube. 
Yeah, you, you know, I've never done that, Sherry. I don't know how you could ever do that. So. I know, right? Um, we're, we're, what do we have? We have six oh, other business. Back. Yeah, other and I, I have one thing I know the business and time. You were just talking about the budget process. Is Tom still here? I don't see Tom. I'm still here. I'm Good. still here. Okay. Um, we talked about um, trying to get a budget item in for a, a, at least on a consulting basis for a, an, an energy manager. Um, yeah, that's old. That, that's old business. We had that from last month, right? And we, I think we were going to reach out and try and get some numbers from. Um, Catherine Davini. Catherine, thank you. Yeah, I just don't want to miss our 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 deadline there. Or I don't know how the process works. Okay. Well, again, I think um, it's good to be talking about it now. And I guess the question is, when you say an energy manager is a consultant, right now we we have a small pittance of money that, that I get to use for an on-call energy consultant that we use for a few things. Um, pittance in less than, we may be $2,000 a year is the upper end of what we've been able to, to do. And that helps with just some of our procurement. Um, and he becomes, he's a good sounding board for me from time to time. If you're looking to hire somebody that would be a consultant facilitating what we're doing in public works, it's one thing. If you're looking for a consultant that would facilitate clean energy task force. That's another. Um, so it, it's just getting, you know, cause I can, I can also help you put together the numbers. If you are looking for the town to hire somebody such as Catherine, where it would be a part-time employee um, with significant skills three days a week, it's a whole different conversation. I mean, that would be our best case. That would be our, my, my dream is to have a, have a Catherine Davini, you know, part-time skilled, um, but I, I, and I think when we talked about that, I, th I think I think it was your idea that we, we could approach that on, a, on more of a consultant budget basis. I, I think that the best thing to do for us would be if we could get somebody in a small firm, a, a, a sole proprietor who, again, could give us a, a regular routine number of hours. And then after one year or possibly two years, now you're going back to the board of selectmen and saying, listen, here are the projects that they helped us with that we may or may not have been able to do otherwise. This is, and if we do it right, they should be pretty close to saving their salary every year. Right. Oh yeah. That was the whole point. And that was the, that was the um, action item to reach out to Catherine to say, do you have any data on your work in West Hartford that says, you know, they hire me, they pay me X. Here's what I've saved the, the community. Yep. Because we, if we start with data from another town, it becomes easier to justify your action in taking that person on. You know, I mean, I mean so, this whole thing was based on, if we could save energy, we can save money. Yeah. All right, so I can try to flesh that out and I'll work with you on that, Tom. Um, one more quick item. Um, we're, we're, we seem to be getting bumped to the five o'clock slot. Um, is that okay with people or we, we need to plan our schedule for next year? Um, is, are, are people okay with being bounced around or would we rather try to find a time, a day where we, we know we can be at 6.30 or have a better chance of staying at 6.30? How do people feel about that? It's a little early for me. I'm fully in favor of finding a day that works a bit better. Okay. And I got to tell you, I think it's my wife's committee that's bumping us. Well, I agree. I think... Five o'clock is a little tough. Yeah. Okay. So Tom, we'll we'll work on that. Yep. And Ray. Yep. It, it, I'll, so I'll have yeah. a word with her. You know, zoning this pigeon little zoning thing is like out of control. <laughs> All right. Um. Let me just take that note real quick. God, I hate doing this. All right. So I think that's the end of it. Open forum. Is there anything else um, that we want to discuss on this? somewhat lengthy clean energy task force meeting. Is this, could I say something? Is this the open for part? Um, uh, I think technically no. Anybody object? I don't object. Go ahead, Roger, what do you got? All I was gonna say is when you start looking at this in detail, first of all, I love your conversation and discussion. I think you guys are thinking about this right. Uh, if you want any input from Susan or myself, we are at your beck and call. Thank you so much.
Thank you. That, that's really important because you guys have been kind of the catalyst to this thing anyway. Okay, Ray's going to cut us off. All right. So we're here a meeting for adjournment. Motion. Or a motion for adjournment. Second. Right, that thing. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody move that, please. Phil, are you moving that? I, I thought I heard a move. Did I not? I'll move. All right, so good. Move. Any second? I'll second. Sure, I'll you second. in the meeting. Woohoo! Three. I know. One. <laughs> My Great. contribution. Yeah, excellent. Thank you Thanks, so much. Folks.